seriously, I love the genius thing. You keep it coming. My, my self-esteem is like really above average right now. <laughs> Just three points above average. Oh, yeah. Boy. Right <laughs> over it. Tap into the psychology of engagement and more. This is where we talk about life, learning, and everything in between. This is the Lifelong Podcast, a show for those of you who love to ask why. Because we're marketers, because we're coaches, because we're change makers. Each week, we dive into the big questions and explore the psychology of engagement with strategies, tactics, and special guests along the way. Now, here's your guide, the visibility hacking queen herself, Coach Molly. Hey, everyone, and welcome back to the Lifelong Podcast. I'm your host, Coach Molly from visibilityhacking.com. And yes, this is a surprise Sunday episode. Why? because the psychology of marketing is such an important topic that I just, I can't stop talking about it, guys. Really, really, I can't. So let's do the business before we do the fun, the business. Find me on all of your favorite social platforms. I'm either Coach Molly with an E or Three Pines Leadership. It's kind of an activity like a scavenger hunt to find me, but once you find me, it's absolutely worth it. It's like lucky charms, right? The pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, I promise you. So find me over there. If you want to come hang out, you want to come chat, find me on Clubhouse. I'm at Coach Molly, and I love to hang out in my Facebook group, The Visibility Hackers. All right, that's the business. We've paid the bills. Now let me introduce you the reason why we have this special Sunday episode. So I've told you guys before, I'm part of the secret society of super cool marketers. And while we were chatting and we had this thing, and then this guy showed up and he started to tease us with these really cool snippets of code that could completely change our websites. And I was like completely sold on this. And I was like, this is really cool. I'm going to keep showing up. And then on the last day of all of these free things that he was giving out, then he sold me on something that has changed my business forever, forever. I have literally saved a hundred thousand dollars on building this part of my business. That was honestly in my 10 year plan and now is in my bank account. Like it, it's a thing. It's a real thing that people are watching. And that my friends is the visibility vault, which if you haven't signed up for already, then you should be. Links are down below visibilityhacking.com slash unlock the vault. Well, anyways, so the vault's super exciting, right? Because who has a vault? We have like Catherine Jones has a vault. We know like Russell Brunson has a vault. Uh, we know like the charisma hacker herself, McCall Jones has a vault. And now I have a vault. And so I want to introduce to you the reason why I have a vault, but more importantly, I want to talk to you about something my vault designer, developer, genius code guy is doing, because he's not just a genius when it comes to code, my friends. Tanner Jones, who is our guest today, he is not just the curator of code, which he was in my brain a couple months ago, but now he is also a genius, a just genius, period end of story, underlined, bold face, italic fonts for emphasis. Tanner Jones, welcome to the show. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you for calling me a genius. It's so much better when you say it than when I say it, because I sound like a real jerk when I do, you know? So I appreciate you really building me up right there. No worries. You have my PayPal link. Just send the, send the tip over. It's okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so Tanner, why, why am I so excited to have you on my show? Okay. So I, I I was thinking about how I would introduce myself, and I'm gonna re I'm gonna rename this section of our of our conversation called "My Path to Molly," and I feel like Ooh. that's gonna just really be special. Okay, so, uh, so my sister is Catherine Jones, right? Founder of the Design Hackers, creator of CF Design School. Uh, sure that you've seen her. If you haven't seen her, I I she. I don't know where you're at because she's They're everywhere. Living under rocks. Yeah, she's she's everywhere. So she's doing amazing things. And last year, uh, me and my wife went to Funnel Hacking Live uh, 2019 to go support her because she was speaking. Russell asked her to speak. And while we were there, my wife, who is or was a performance coach for actors and singers, saw all of these entrepreneurs who were doing things uh, like live videos, you know, they were vlogging, they're doing all of this stuff. And she, she always phrases this in a very nice way. 
and I'm not going to. It was a train wreck. People sucked. It was awful. Like it was really, really bad. <laughs> and so we go back to our hotel room at the end of that first night. And she looks at me and she says, you know what? I'm doing this thing. These people need my help. Uh, over the next few months, I'm transitioning everything from actors and singers over to entrepreneurs. This is going to be awesome. Uh, and, and what happened in that moment was, was I didn't know it at the time, but, but charisma hacking was born. And now she has this framework that's a, it's less like a lot of like, you know, presentation, uh, you get, you get a lot of presentation coaches that are just like, you know, you got to find your voice, right? Hers is less find your voice. And it's more like, here are people that present like you and here's how they're getting them to pay thousands of dollars. So like, let's, let's dial in. You should do it the same way. So uh, she's everywhere as well. So here's where I start in that story. Okay. So McCall's extremely smart, incredible teacher. Uh, but she has very little experience in the online marketing world. And so when she said, I'm going to switch my stuff, she also said, I want to make a million dollars by the next Funnel Hacking Live. And that's insane. That's, that's There's just like a, a level of craziness to that. But she really had this drive. And I've been involved in you know online marketing and startups for uh, my whole time since college. So I realized like, oh, I'm I'm part-time employee number one. So during that time, I made some tools and systems and funnels. And and uh, when McCall had them, Catherine got jealous. And so Catherine had them and then she wanted to share it with uh, her people, right? And so for, if you're gonna come to a definition of Catherine's people, it is Molly. Catherine loves Molly. Uh, and so uh, I had this, this tool, this vault that they were using and and Molly ended up uh, getting it. And so that's how we connected with each other. And, and then I told Molly about this new thing that I'm, I'm doing. And, and now, I mean, I really feel like our friendship is blossoming. And, you know, this is, this is I mean, I, I don't know if we're best friends yet, but maybe by the end of this, <laughs> end of this chat. So that's my path to Molly. That's, that's how I'm sitting here right now, ob observing, uh, your, your beautiful pitch of me as a genius. <laughs> well, you are. And the reason I think that you're an absolute genius is because of the way that you're launching this new over the shoulder launch. So, okay, let me explain to everyone listening at home. Simply, we'll get into it. So Tanner is launching the ability to be part of the development and building of this launch that he's doing. And so it's really neat because it's not just an over the shoulder view of what's happening. It's an over the shoulder view of what's happening when he's doing some really important things. So most marketers out there are marketing coaches out there. And we definitely have seen a lot of this on clubhouse are doing bro launches and they're teaching bro launches, like how to make so much money in a weekend that you can buy yourself a yacht how to make so much money in a week that you can buy yourself a private island. That kind of launch, which seems so inaccessible to so many of us. And I know that in my own coaching business, I'm not in it necessarily first for the money. I'm in it because I want to connect with more people and I want to change more people's lives, which means I need to have a piece of, I need to have a product that matches that. It's it, the money will come if you create a product that matches your people, right? So as Tanner said, he and I got in contact because we, I was part of a specific, a very tiny specific group that Tanner was marketing towards. And it worked. It totally worked. Like the second I had an inkling that, that you were pitching the, the, the thing that you were pitching, I was like all over it. I was just like literally in the chat, throwing my money at you. Take my credit card, stop talking and just give me the page to pay. That was it while I was at the gym. So I'm like structuring my life around being there for your launch. So if that worked so well, I wanted to be part of this new thing that you're doing. So tell us a bit more about this new crazy idea. How did you decide that you were going to do it this way and invite people into the process? Okay. So um, let me, let me give uh, a little bit of like personal uh, therapy, you know, this is, this is me working through my own internal demons. Okay. So like, I hate 
the online marketing world. <laughs> like I just, I just do. Uh, there. So you talk about the bro launches and all that sort of stuff. So this is what I'm doing is different than just a course. And here's the big reason that it's different than a course because in a course, the instructor is safe and the student is not, right? The course instructor sits safely in front of their like manicured background as they like share pieces of wisdom and they have their PowerPoint things where that are big and then their little head in the corner and, and the checklist of what you're supposed to do. But if it doesn't work for the student, doesn't matter the instructor, they got paid, right? And they're feeling real good about yourself. And I know this happens all the time because at that same Funnel Hacking Live 2019 uh, course, they have, the, they have this two comma club uh, and two comma club X uh, where they reward people who've done a million and $10 million. And I saw a couple of people who went up on stage for $10 million. And I'm like, I was like, oh my gosh, I recognize them uh, because I know that their stuff is garbage. Like I've seen their stuff. And I was like, they've probably had 10,000 students and not a single one has been a success. And uh, yeah, it was, it, it was really wild. And so there's actually, there's an economic term that's related to this. It's called moral hazard. Okay. So moral hazard is a big reason why uh, the financial crisis in the late 2000s happened, right? Moral hazard happens when somebody does risky things because they know they won't be impacted by the results, right? In finance, it's getting bailed out by the, it's the banks getting bailed out. And in our industry, it's a course creator creating a worthless strategy because they know they're not the person who has to follow it, right? So what I'm doing is the opposite, right? The strategy, the tactics, every little detail I share has to be awesome. And the reason why it does is because if it's not, I'm going to screw up my launch. So here's the thing. The goal is the launch is I'm going to make $40,000 in 50 days. That's the game, right? $40,000 in 50 days. And I don't want to screw up the $40,000. Maybe this isn't a big deal to some people, but $40,000 in 50 days as a side hustle, that's a big deal to me. I want that. Okay. So unlike a safe course instructor, I am perfectly incentivized to show something that is effective, cutting edge, easy to follow. I don't have time to go over fluffy stuff because I don't have time for anything that's not knocking stuff off of my checklist, right? So like this over the shoulder look guarantees that somebody is, they're, they're getting something real, right? And they will have an example to follow about all the things that I have to do, which is a huge list. I've got to go over product creation. I've got to figure out marketing strategies. I've got to do my funnel setup. I've got to get my effective sales pitches. I've got to set, I've got so much to set up. So there isn't time for me to pontificate as a course, as a you know course person and just, you know, talk about lofty ideals like mindset. It's like, I promise you, we will not talk about mindset in this once because like, I just don't have time. Like maybe if, if there was time to like really work through this for, for 500 days, but I have 50 days to make it happen. And, and so for me, that is what uh, I am, uh, that is what I'm offering. That's what I'm excited about. And talking about that personal therapy of how I've got some like resentment it's a little bit to like thumb my nose uh, at everyone who I think sucks. And so it's like, this is what, this is what the world should be. And so for a group of people, uh, you know, Molly, you were one of the first people I talked to about this uh, because I think there's a certain person who is drawn to results driven education and, and, and training. So, uh, that's, that's kind of the overview and my personal emotions that are behind it, if that makes sense. Absolutely. And what I'm really excited about is that you've already pitched your core product to, to a market before you have found it successful. You've worked out some kinks and, and did a bit of a beta group with these people. And, and we figured out it, it's really cool and it can apply to so many different parts of the market, but when you were when you were pitching to us originally, we were a specific group who was keen on technical stuff. We're keen on design. We have already invested in order to get into that group, so we know, or you know, that we're pre-qualified as wallet openers, and we already usually will because we've invested. We have a business in mind already. We're not the people who are still dreaming about their businesses. We're the people who are taking the action on our businesses. So 
the thing that I'm going to, I'm finding so fascinating is that you're now taking this opportunity to shift and you're now going to be pitching that same core product to a completely different audience, not entirely different. There will be some overlap, which will be neat and see how you're able to speak to the people who have heard this pitch the previous incarnation of mm -hmm. this pitch before mm -hmm. and those who have never heard it before. But what's neat about these two groups is how they connect to each other. They're both following, both of these groups are following the same attractive character. They're both trying and pushing for that same trajectory and the same tangible results, but where they are on their journey is going to be very different. And this group is more of what I like to call the 99 percenters, the people who are going for more free information, who are perusing and they're sampling the buffet, as opposed to those who decide that on their cruise, they're paying for specialty dining and they're going to the steakhouse. So what are, what are your fears when it comes to switching that pitch to a different audience who might also be the same audience? Okay, so let me tell you this, because I learned something about you. And I was going to talk to you about this, not on, not, not here, but, but at some other time, but we're going to talk about it. Slam poetry. Absolutely. Okay. So <laughs> I, I found that you were a slam poetry person yep. and I also like slam poetry. I may, I am a consumer, not a creator because, you know, I just, I just don't, don't have the courage to, to do it. So, uh, 2021, it's a new year, 2021, maybe 2022. We'll give it some space. And McCall was asking me about like slam poetry, like what, what even is it? And I was trying to give her a definition and she was like, is it just that it doesn't rhyme? And I was like, no, cause there's a lot of poetry that doesn't rhyme. And I was trying to give her like a, like a quick, like piercing thing where she could say, like this is slam poetry. And for me, uh, slam poetry is the only poetry you can fail. It's the only poetry with stakes, right? Yeah, no other absolutely. And have a competition. No yeah. other poetry can, can uh, have something where you're like this poem won, right? There's there, yeah. the slam poetry has true, real stakes. And I think that's why I love it, right? Because you watch it and you're like, this could really tank. This isn't some Jack Frost other path. Like this is something that could truly blow up in this person's face. And so uh, I have this realization that part of the thing I like about slam poetry is that you can fail. There is something that is so appealing to me about the rawness of that, that I really appreciate. And one of the things as we're talking about the challenges of this other group, the thing that's different about this is I could really screw this up. I could fail. This isn't this isn't pre-designed, pre-set up. I've got all those challenges that we're talking about. And so because of that, I'm also hoping that the people who uh, are coming along with me on this journey will see the panic. You may not have known this, but there was one point during the during the original pitch that I talked to you where I went into a swearing tirade for probably a half minute. And I'm not a swearer, like that's not me. And I was just like, cause, cause something had broken and I was going nuts and there was a deadline. And so uh, I think that's part of the journey that people don't share, right? And people are gonna, people are gonna see that. We're gonna see the chaos. So um, that's, that I wanted to kind of pitch that in terms of like the, of all of these problems. Cause I'm gonna, I'm gonna say some things but like, this isn't a guarantee that these are going to be the right answers. I have some directional stuff, but like part of the experience of this is like, I might have to change these things on the fly and stuff. So here, here is some of the, um, we're going to go psychology of marketing. Here's one of the interesting things about that 99%, right? Um, we've all, we've all been at that point at one, at one time, right? Everybody, everybody dips their toe first. And so uh, as I try to think about what is it that stops someone from, from buying, right? What is it that stops someone from, from pushing past, from, from dipping that toe? One of the things for me, psychology wise, that I'm going to try to uh, push isn't just, okay, we're getting into a weird thing. This is like an internal process that I've been like, mapping for the last year. It's this idea of time under eyeballs. So in weightlifting, 
there was this big thing that happened that was called time under tension, right? Where people yeah. would say like, you know, we're not going to just do five reps. We're going to do five reps for five seconds. You add it up. That time under tension metric was like an interesting thing. And something that I did in the first pitch was I was actually measuring time under eyeballs for everyone that was coming through. How much time was someone seeing my face? How much time was there in individual interaction? Because I have a working hypothesis that there is a certain time under eyeballs limit that you get to when all of a sudden somebody feels like you're their friend. So uh, this is why you naturally become friends with the people who are in your classes, people who you're roommates with. There is a tipping point where someone becomes your friend. So a big reason why people get into internet marketing is because they see someone they know doing it. Yeah. Right? That's And so for this 99%, one of those things that I'm going to be optimizing for is how can I take this group of 5,000 people, which by the way, this 5,000 person group is also like a little inactive. I'd, I'd say a solid, I'd say a solid 98% of this group is not actively engaging. And I'm knowing I'm going to need more than more than that to be looking at my stuff. So part of that psychology is saying, what do I do for someone that is not engaged with the group at all, a group that's not mine? What are the processes and techniques that I need to do so that they look, they have eyes on me for X amount of minutes. Uh, so that's, that's kind of an example of like one of the things there's going to be a ton, right? This is, and that's why I'm saying like, this is going to be there's potential for failure here because that's just not the only thing that I have to do. There's there's going to be some heaviness to it, but one of the metrics I am going to be looking at and that I have kind of in my back pocket for the last little bit is this concept of time under eyeballs. And so that's one of the things I'm going to be working on. Oh, I love it. And you're a, you're a science guy. You're a data guy. You you oh, time under eyeballs blows my mind first of all. And then you were also talking before uh, maybe it was the last time we chatted about um, the metric of how much each comment makes because mm -hmm. your your pitching style is beautiful when it comes to making that feeling um, your your audience who maybe you've never met before making them feel like your best friends is what's going to help facilitate that sale. And you do it in like really neat ways. And one of the ways is by actively engaging with the commenting and using that as your primary driver. So what did you find? Like what kind of cool things did you find on the first launch when it comes to comments and how okay. valuable they might be? <laughs> yeah, so so here was the idea of, of that first launch as you remember there was a training process. We were talking about uh, Pavlovian responses before we started up here uh, of, I do a thing, I get a thing back. I do a thing, I get a thing back. And there was a training throughout that whole week, which was if you comment, if you and I chat, it always is beneficial to you. It is always beneficial to you. So by establishing that as one of the first kind of contact points, when somebody got to that pitch and I was saying, guys, it makes sense to connect with me. I'll reward you for it the same way that I have. It allowed this relationship to exist where what ended up happening was, uh, yeah, I, I can share this. This is kind of a fun thing. A lot of people drop the link in like a sales pitch and I didn't, I didn't, I didn't drop the link until like the very, very end of an obnoxious amount of time. And I just said like, listen, if you commented, like I've got my people right now, like they're sending the link to your comments and they've picked people that we like. And we've done all these things because there was a sense of loyalty to it. And what ended up happening was there was such madness around it that people were getting mad in the comments. We were getting like angry, like messages from people like, why haven't I gotten mine yet? Which was awesome, right? Like there was this, there was this response. And part of that was because, you know, people who hadn't gotten it yet, right. We were like releasing it in like stages of like 20 comments at a time or 20 messages at a time. And so somebody, this is this, this is another interesting part about Pavlovian responses that, that we didn't touch on, but Pavlovian responses only really hook if it is a non, I can't remember the term for it, but it can't be again and again and again, right? It can't be, I do a thing, I get it, I do a thing, I get it. It has to be, I do a thing, I get it, I do a thing, I get it, I do a thing, 
and then you oh, take wait, the unconditioned wait, response. What just away. happened? Yeah, what just happened yeah. right there? Crap! Do it! Do it! Do it! And then it like happens again. And so, what ended up happening that that go around was that we had established this idea of like, I promise I'm going to hook you up if you comment. And then by the end of it, it was like, I'm going to hook you up, but like you got to wait. And there's there's a psychological uh, portion to that. To like, it's almost like helps the person remember like, oh crap, like this isn't happening, which is why I, I know this is going to be a good thing. I've always come to expect that. So with all of that, we didn't, I didn't have like a list or anything, but I know how many people got the link and I know how many people commented and the amount of money we made per comment was, was, or per, per user comment, not per comment, but the amount of people who commented, the amount of money we made was, uh, was a little over $200 per comment. So a lot of people will kind of think to themselves like, oh, like a $200, you know, sale per sale is like a good amount. And it's like, no, that wasn't it. And they're like, oh, wow. Well, two, $200 per like, per like lead. And it's like, no, not per lead. And it's like $200 per like website hit. And it's like, no, it's not $200 per website. Hit. It was like literally $200 per people who were given the link. Right. So for somebody who has like a webinar funnel, those numbers come through. A lot of people try to get a webinar registration for, you know, five, seven dollars, try and get it lower. And that's how much it, it, that's how valuable it is to have someone give you uh, their email to sign up for something. And in our case, we had something where it was worth, you know, what's five, two hundred. That's 40 times. It was, it was 40 times more valuable than a well-optimized webinar funnel to do it in this way. So that was part of like that psychological thing that we wanted to do. We're going to have to figure out how to do that in this second group, right? We're going to have to figure out there's there's more people. We can cause more anger. We don't want to do that, right? There's like a there's like a sweet spot. Uh, I'm going to be honest. I don't I don't really know quite how we're going to pull it off, but I know I want to do it, and that's part of this journey with people is to say like, you know, let's say this works really really well, and we need to give out 500 comments, right? And how are we going to do that because are we going to need like six people like running comments for this whole thing? And like, how are we going to keep track? Like it was that we were able to do it because we were part of that smaller intimate group when, when we did this. Right. I think, I think, uh, I think that we had, uh, it was around a hundred ish people who, who were watching that, that, that thing. And how are we going to do it if it's bigger? So that's part of the, part of the, part of the sales pitch ironically is, we don't know what we're doing yet. Like we don't know, but we got some, we got some models. We know things that have worked in the past and we're going to see what we can do. Yeah. As an educator, I find that for, as an educator and as a former alternative education student, I am firmly in the world that experiential education is the way to go. And when we're looking at the way that people are teaching launches and they're teaching course strategies and whatnot, they're so detached. And as you mentioned before, it's like they don't have anything to risk other than the time that they put in to develop the course in the front end. The first time someone pays for that course, that time's paid for. Now it's just gain for them. And the students are putting all of their risk, their time, their money, and their their frame of mind and the, the understanding and information that goes into their brain. So I'm very, very careful about that. So I know for my own learning style that being part of your over the shoulder launch is exactly what I need. I want to see what it looks like. I want to give you my ideas and go, "Hey, why don't we try this? We can look at this perspective. We can look at this problem from this perspective. Will that work?" And then you can mull it over and say, "Oh, maybe, maybe that'll work. I'll I'll think about it, but I see it from this perspective and this is why it might work or it might not work." And being actively involved in that process to see what's going through your brain and how does that compare to how I might do it because I want to take this same process and apply it to joint ventures that I want to do for my business or, or joint ventures that I want to do, or I want to help facilitate between other business owners and my clients and things like that. So it's this really cool experience to actually be part of it. And so many course creators and gurus and, and whatever you want to call yourselves out there, people, so many of them are focused on just making money and keeping their image. So they will show you what works. They might not tell you their niche because that might not be glamorous to them. They might not share the, the downsides or the things that didn't work. Or if something doesn't work, they'll tell you, oh, I totally planned that. And so I'm really excited for the experiential part of it. Um, what do you think is going to be the biggest challenge that you have in terms of getting that across to your students? 
So the, the, okay, so let me, let me make sure I've got your question correct, right? The biggest challenge in, in having people understand why uh, this over the shoulder thing is important or the biggest challenge in terms of, of, uh, of the actual like launch? Help me understand. Let's say question. both. Okay. <laughs> Part of the trickiness of, of having this be a, of, of having someone understand why this is helpful uh, as, as to, to follow along is because there is a, <laughs> there is a beautiful model that speaks to desperation uh, in terms of marketing. And it is this thing, and we've seen, we've seen it, most of us have used it and it's do X in Y without Z. Right. And, and there is something about that, that feels so like, oh, like I'm desperate. You know, I, I don't have things. I want things and I want them fast, which is by the way, why this works so well in, in both health things, lose weight in relationship things, pick up girls and in, in like finance things, because it's, it's, it's not actually a niche thing. It's a desperation play. And yeah. so that particular thing is actually, it's actually a really great marketing strategy if your target demographic is desperate. Um, and I don't, I can't offer that with this. That is part of the hard part of this process is I can't say, you know, you're going to get this and this without this. All I can tell you is I'm gunning for, I'm gunning for 40 K I'm trying to do it in 50 days. Like that's, that's all I can offer. And then that's all, uh, all I can really give the other thing, the other challenge that someone might have. Oh man, I'm trying to remember back into college where it's from. The other challenge that someone might have is they might say, well, I'm not doing a JV or I'm not doing a launch or I'm not doing, you know, this, this doesn't, you know, fit for me, this over the shoulder thing. And there's this interesting, oh, it's some, it's Tolstoy, maybe it's some Russian guy. And I can't remember Anna Kareninov, but he talks about how, uh, all happy families are the same and all miserable families are miserable in their own special way. And his point is, is that to have a happy family, there are basic structures that everyone has to have in place, right? There's just, there's just certain things that have to be there. Um, and, and so with something like this, the principles from this, even if someone's not launching, the principles have to apply to several places. And so to say to somebody like, oh, well, you know, I don't, uh, I don't know if I'm going to do this with a launch or if I'm just going to do like, what if I'm just doing like pay-per-click ads? It's like, well, okay, well, you know, I'm having to figure out, you know, a couple of tripwire products in order to make this thing work like that. Those principles are going to make sense for your sort of thing. So there is a challenge explaining to someone when they're watching something just like as an experience where they go, but I don't know, that's like, is that like exactly what I'm doing? And it's, and the answer is just like, no, it's not. But if you trust that all happy families are the same, you know, that these principles like go across, like then you will, but, but it doesn't follow that path of like, do this and this without this. And so that reminds uh, me of like chefs when they go to cooking school, they learn the techniques. They don't necessarily graduate having made everything in the world, but with those mm -hmm. fundamental techniques, they're able to make every food they possibly could imagine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so for me, you know, uh, just, just as an example, right. Uh, there are certain techniques that I really want to try on this. Okay. This is actually, let me show you another thing. I'm going to get into in my, in my 2021, I don't really have goals. I think goals suck. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, but I have a couple of focuses and they're on two different type of like personas. And one of my personas that this is targeted to is called the lonely McCall, right? What if I didn't exist for McCall, what would she need? Like, what would be some steps that she would have to, to take in order to make this happen for her? And so when I'm doing all of this stuff, it has this, this backlog thing of like, I'm testing things to see if they'll work for McCall, right? Because McCall's, McCall's trying to make these things happen. I'm testing these launches. And so Part of this, uh, part of this process and this experimentation process is saying like, can I like try a few things out so this will apply to future projects, right? Here's my long way of getting to that. 
whether or not I kill it on Instagram with Catherine's Instagram as a joint venture is not going it, to, it's not going to like move the needle gar, in a gargantuan way, but it might for some of the stuff that McCall's doing. So like, I'm going to do it anyways. Like I think I actually, I've been testing some stuff on Instagram in terms of like what works. And so like, I'm going to try it. And so because of that, there are uh, parts of this where someone who might say, maybe this doesn't apply to me. It's like, well, yeah, maybe it's not exactly what you're doing, but like, it doesn't apply all the way to some of the stuff I'm doing in the future either, but I'm still trying to learn from it. I hope, does that make sense? Absolutely. And one of the things, one of the resources that I already have my hands on, which I am very excited about, is simply a free flowing conversation you had with yourself about what you need to get done for this launch, where your, your thoughts are, where your worries are, what you might need to get done, what restrictions you might have, who you might need to network with. And I think that's really neat to see behind the scenes, definitely. And it's a hundred times more valuable than what I paid for it already. Um, <laughs> just to see what someone else is doing and the way that they're thinking through that process. So if you guys listening at home are building your very first funnel, this is a really cool way to learn how that simplified funnel that maybe you learned in the one funnel away challenge can be more complex and how you turn that simple funnel into a million dollar project. We're not going to launch for a million dollars. It's a road that we're building brick by brick by brick, but these are the fundamental questions you need to be asking. And one thing I absolutely adore about you, Tanner, is the fact that you ask really good questions and you know how to dive deep and ask the right kinds of questions. Like, why are people acting this way? And then following that, how can I make them act that way more? or less? Mm -hmm. What can I do to change that behavior? And I think that's really, really fascinating. And as I look through that, that document of all of the things that you're worried about and all of the things you have to build, we think, all right, I like to think about experiences, like from the beginning to the end. I used to work in summer camp for years. So it's about creating that awesome sense of being part of a community, being excited, wanting to buy into this group mentality where we're going to paint our faces and dress up in crazy costumes and pretend that we're dinosaurs for the day or whatever it is. But how do you, how do you use those same techniques to, to get people in a marketing world? How do you use those same techniques to connect with people as if we're side by side hanging out on the couch in our pajamas, but we're virtually distant from each other? How do we work on a project together when we're so far apart? And so I'm so excited to see all of those tangential things that we're going to learn on this process as well. And I'm, I'm so on board for this, like completely on board for this. <laughs> I'm, I'm, ex I'm excited. Can I tell you? So I am a I am a crazy, crazy like internal note taker. My, I, I did like a word count one time. I think I, I, I have stacks and stacks of Bibles of personal notes, right? In terms of terms of just like raw text. And so one of the things I am sharing in part of that is just kind of like the raw, ugly, like rough drafts of like thoughts that I have. What should what should my first email look like? You know, okay, that kind of sucked, right? So but maybe like this is rough draft too. So you know, I am giving, and I, I don't know if I, I told this to you, but like, I am not just like going to give my thoughts, but like, I'm kind of also opening up like my Gmail account. Um, I, I'm going to give everyone access to my Google Docs. Uh, I'm going to let everyone see my Stripe account. Uh, and it's just because um, of kind of that, that idea of being able to see tangentially, you'll also be able to see where I, where it's like, why is he worrying about that? That's stupid. Mm -hmm. Right. And so it's like, there's, there's opportunities uh, there as well. So yeah, so there's a lot that um, a lot of the process is just trying to get it, get it down on paper and see and see what we can make happen. Oh, I love that. I love that. I'm I'm on a mission to make another million dollars on a new funnel. Um, and so I'm definitely looking to do more joint ventures. So you guys are going to be seeing me doing a lot more of that, partnering with a lot of cool people. Um, and I'm definitely leaning more towards the style of launch that you're going for is building that deeper community, getting engagement, not just for the metrics, not just to kiss the algorithm algorithms, but but to actually create connections between people, which allows you to get to know them a little bit more. So it's easy to get to know people's pain points and their problems when you're actually talking to them and you open that door and you create that dialogue. 
But one of the things that you have to do for this launch is figure out the pain points of a brand new group before you have that, that connection with them. So what are, what are, what, what, tell me about that. (laughs) So this is going to be kind of a tricky thing, right? So we're going, going numbers again. I think I mentioned this maybe in some of our stuff, but I've got my core product. I know what my core product is going to be. I don't know how I'm going to price it, but I do know it has to be like a certain amount. I also know that my back end funnel needs to increase prices by about 33% in order for this to like, in order for me to reach my, my goals on this sort of thing. So it's not only what is the product going to be, but I have some price points in my head of like, oh, I need a couple products that are like, like I would sell for between 20 to 50 bucks and I need to give them away for free. And then I need to have a couple products that are worth, you know, anywhere between 200 to $800 uh, that will have as like upsells. Um, and, and part of, uh, and so part of that product cre- creation is honest, like I'm, I'm going to be, I'm nervous about that. Right. I, I know I could do one. I don't, cause I, cause I was able to string together some stuff on my previous launch. I'm, I'm worried about putting together, you know, all of these. So one of the things that I am going to do, and this is something that's good for other people that like, don't. They, they, that they're feeling a little bit lost. So, so one of the issues that a lot of people who are starting have is they'll say like, oh, uh, you know, I just want to make the world a better place. And uh, I really want to help people like achieve their passion. And, and it's like, that's honestly, that's great. Like emotionally, like spot on kid, like that's, that's great. Why not? Uh, but you don't, you can't like move from that. And so part of what I'm going to be doing with this group of 5,000 people is I'm probably going to end up scouring, you know, the last year of posts that there have been on there. And then with the people who are commenting, I'm going to go look at their profiles and I'm going to see what other groups that they're in. So, I mean, there's going to be this like heavy research process. And typically if you're doing a product, you'd want it to like stretch out. Like you'd want to have, so you'd want to have some time to do this and I don't. So it's going to be like a fairly compressed uh, sort of thing, but but the issue that uh, a lot of people have with you know I want to just help people achieve their passion is that uh, there's not a lot of people you know typing into Google how to achieve my passion. You know we're gonna we're gonna get uh, religious here real quick. I I used to be a Mormon missionary back in the day, and one of the funny things that I would tell like when I would train people, so I would say there is not a single person in our like region that we're in charge of that woke up this morning and was like, ah, I think today's the day I want to become a Mormon, right? It's just like, nobody thinks that, right? <laughs> nobody thinks that. On my calendar, today's the day. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Nobody's like, oh, just another Tuesday, huh? Time to become a Mormon. <laughs> like that doesn't happen. And so uh, part of the issue that a, that a new missionary will have is they'll be like, well, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm here to make people into Mormons. Like that's my thing. And so there's this disconnect. And so that tends to happen too, when you say, what are people really looking for? Right. It's much easier if you're a Mormon missionary to say, who just moved here and is kind of looking for a church. Right. Like that, that's something that somebody might wake up and say like, Oh, we just moved from there. Like we got to find a new church. And it's like, I guess we'll do the right. Like, but just like thinking like that is helpful. And so going to these groups, I'm not looking for people who are searching for their passion. I'm looking for questions that are like, ah, crap. Like I got to go to a new church or like, I should really try to kick my cocaine habit. Right. Like there's just like, there's just like, you know, you look for those questions. uh, And, and that's what I'm going to be doing in those groups. And if I can answer those, I know I'm going to be able to build a product uh, around them. And so, so that's, uh, that's a little bit uh, what I'm doing. I'm going to, I'm going to ramble a little bit further. The other thing that is really nice about making products is like, if you can prove that something makes money, if you can prove that something like has, has that impact, it becomes super easy to sell, right? You're at that point, you're just like arguing. If, if you have a product that costs $10 and it makes somebody $20 at that point, you're just arguing about like fear, uncertainty, doubt, and whether the person has the budget for $10 in the first place, it becomes very easy to sell. So I also need to find which one of these products I can do that can have someone have a quick turnaround to have them make money because that's so much easier to sell, which is what it should be in like all of internet marketing, really tough to sell things that don't like help you make money or save money. So 
I'm, I'm looking at that too. That's going to be part of my process. I'm going to really flesh that out, but, but that's one of the things that's going to be very heavy that I'm going to end up sharing with everyone on how I'm trying to pull that off. Oh, I love it. So you, you've shared with us a lot of the, the value that we're going to be getting when we go along this journey with you to make 40K in less than two months, which I think is wild, absolutely wild. Uh, but I am so on board for this, absolutely on board for this. So I know that this is going to help me make 40K easily uh, because I'm going to know not only the formula that works in the end, but also the struggles and the obstacles and the thought processes and the second guessing that went along the way. And on top of that, actually seeing the rough drafts and the emails and the Stripes account and actually seeing behind the curtain of, oh wait, it's not just being shipped out to another agency where I can't really figure out what's going on and are they working? Are they not? What are they AB testing? And you know, they tell me to split test, but what are they actually like to actually be part of that process as if I was an employee in the agency and I'm part of this building of something beautiful. I am so excited for all of that, but um, the coolest part about it is how much I, I've paid you for this. Yeah, okay, so again, there's, there's always panic with something like this. And, and so I want to get rid of the barrier of like, oh, I'm gonna spend a ton of money to get on something that I don't know if is gonna be valuable. So it's a $1 free trial. So we're going to have, we got, we got our 50 days, but for the first week where we do stuff, you can have access to it for one buck. And, uh, and then after that week, if I've done my job right, and if I've shown my process, you'll have deep clarity on whether you want to stay or not. Right. And, and maybe, maybe someone will say like, Oh, you know what? Like, that's terrible. Not for me. I don't think that's going to happen, but if that's the case, yeah, you did have some loss, which was, you know, a dollar which I had an argument about someone. I don't know how many chicken nuggets that's worth. I, I always thought it was like- 1.5 1. <laughs> chicken nuggets. 1.5 chicken nuggets is what you've lost. And if it's <laughs> worth, and so if you're the person who says like, I don't like to take big risks mm -hmm. or I don't have a lot of cash to do this, then it's just like, it's, it's $1. The other thing is, is if like, you don't have a ton of money and you're like, I couldn't afford something like this. And it's like, I actually don't care if you come in for a dollar and then cancel. Like, that's fine. You can just stick for a month, uh, uh, a week. That's cool too. I'd love for you to be able to check it out. But at the end of that week, we're, you're going to be able to sit down and say like, this is part of something. This is something that's cool. Something I want to keep like on top of. I want to be part of this. And then, and then, you know, then I charge you big bucks. But <laughs> it's, it's uh, it, it, until that point, I want to make it easy for someone to make a decision, if that makes sense. And the cool thing is you're not scamming people. Like, to be completely honest, <laughs> you're a real person who answers your DMs. And if at any point someone buys the $1 trial and it's not the right thing, something completely tragic happens, aliens come down, you get an invitation to go to Mars, I don't know, you get drafted for the <laughs> NHL. Whatever your reason is, all you have to do send Tanner a little message and say, yo, bro, I, I totally can't like NBA calls my name and he'll cancel it for you. It's not this big machine behind the scenes that you have to call customer support in all these different countries and wait on hold. And, and then the office hours just don't align. And no, it's, it's one guy, one person, one message. That's all you have to do. It's a dollar, my friends. It's less than the cup of a coffee. It's the, oh, seriously, Seriously, I have read that one document that I mentioned before, guys, and uh, I, I paid a dollar for it. And um, yeah, I think that that one document, just seeing the things that you know you have to put together, just seeing that roadmap is worth thousands of dollars, thousands of dollars. Don't charge me that much, please. Um, but, but it's because we're friends, that's all. Well, if you want to be friends with Tanner and get your hands on that same document and more, everything that we've been talking about, I highly recommend you put that dollar forward, guys. And if it does, if you, if, okay, here's my guarantee on top of this. If you sign up for the $1 trial and you decide that it's not your thing within that first week and you cancel, I will pay you that dollar. That's my guarantee to you guys. Like, no, there is no risk whatsoever. I will pay you that dollar if this isn't going to work for you. That's, that's my guarantee. Links are down below. <laughs> Boom. That is perfect. 
Perfect. Yeah. I, so I think, I think the website, so here's the, so this is another little piece uh, that, you know, the idea of like rewarding, like loyalty and like moving on stuff. Like that's a big part of like the launch that I had the first time. So for your humans, we'll discount the price. So it's still going to be, still going to be a dollar right up front. Like don't get greedy. It's I'm not shutting that thing down to like 50 cents. I want that. I want that dollar, but like for like the following clean numbers, stuff, we'll discount the price. I don't know how much we'll make it like significant enough, but like, if you're, if you're one of Molly's people, uh, we'll do it. And I think, okay, how do you, how do you feel about this URL? I bought this URL. I don't know if it's great, but this is, I'm thinking this. So over the shoulder academy.org slash Molly with an E or we could do over the shoulder dot academy slash Molly with an E. You know what, kids, boys and girls, either one will work. I'll go, I'll go make sure that they both head to the right place. But we'll hook you up again. I don't I, you'll get some sort of some sort of financial incentive, I guess. For, for oh, that's fantastic. Wow. I I want to buy another trial. You got it. I don't know. <laughs> you got it. You know what? I'll give you double the double the stuff that I give to everyone. I'll send the email to you twice. Yes. Boy, oh boy, I'll send you a copy of my Google Docs two times. Two times. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, if you haven't already headed over to that website, I highly recommend you do because it's the best dollar you will have spent in your entire life. And again, if you cancel, I will pay you that dollar. Zero, zero risk whatsoever. I want you guys to succeed in 2021. 2021 is the year that we stop doing bro marketing, that we stop talking about our yachts, that we stop thinking about buying tropical islands with the first funnel we've ever built. And we start looking more realistically at how we build the path to Oz. And that path is built one brick at a time. It's built by the connections you make with other people. It's built on the questions you ask and your ability to push forward towards Towards, towards and past those obstacles with a smile on your face. And you're going to see a really cool way to do that. And I really want to go on that journey with all of you guys as well. And hey, while I'm going on the journey and you guys are going on the journey with me, I'm going to share with you some extra special bonuses along the way um, because I think the Tanner is cool, but I think that I can do some extra cool stuff on top of that to make this even better because it's not about being a bro. It's about building businesses that actually have impact and make us money on the side as well. How cool is that? Beautiful. I love it. <laughs> so Tanner, how can people get into your world if they want to hear more about what you're doing? Honest to goodness, this is a good thing. Perfect. <laughs> I, will, uh, I, I will say that um, this is like a goofy, a goofy plug, but I really like my wife. If you get on my wife's radar, like it's a great way to get on my radar. Hers, it's McCall Jones, Charisma Hacking. She has a Charisma Vault. That's at charismavault.com. She's McCall Jones official at a lot of different places. She's on Clubhouse. You'll If you just get the Clubhouse app, you'll see her. She's on it all the time. Uh, so that's a good way, to, good way to connect with me. Besides this, if you're like, no, nah, I don't want to spend a dollar, then, you know, go, go say hi to my wife because she's doing really great things too. That's a great plug. Yeah. If you, if you're just like passing on this dollar thing and you're like, ah, I don't really want to build my business. Ah, my bank account likes to be more on the empty side. Yeah. I don't, I don't need to do any of that. Well then simply all you have to do is go back a couple episodes in the lifelong podcast to our end of 2020 episode where I sat down with the one and only McCall Jones and, uh, Things have definitely evolved and changed in her business since we sat down. So when you find her on Facebook, you'll see what those huge changes are. And we can always come back and talk about why those changes were made and what the psychological difference is and what the business difference is when you change your audience completely. And well, Tanner's part of the genius team behind all of that. So I think, I think we found a genius that we need to start following. <laughs> Seriously, I love the genius thing. You keep it coming. My my self esteem is like really above average right now. <laughs> Just three points above average. Oh, yeah, boy. right <laughs> over it. Oh, Tanner, thank you so much for joining us on the podcast today. It's been an absolute blast. It was wonderful to talk to you, Molly. 
Those of you guys listening at home, thank you so much for tuning in with us. I hope you're going to come along with us on this journey. It's not going to cost you too much money. It's going to change your business. It's going to change your life. If you want to know more about the psychology of marketing, then follow along with us both on the podcast and with the Over the Shoulder Academy. Seriously, guys, like I'm just, I'm, I, you'll, you'll hear way too much about this because I am obsessed and I want you guys to join along with me. So click the links down in the description. Come hang out with us. Come hang out on uh, on the Visibility Facebook group because we're going to throw some cool bonuses your way for those of you who take that next step in your business and decide that a $1 investment will really change your life because it will. It will. So guys, thank you so much for joining me. I will see you again in our next episode. Maybe I'll be back on Sunday. I don't know. Tell me if you like it. If you do, rate us, subscribe, like, download all the episodes, share it with your friends, put an emoji on. I don't know. Just enjoy the show, guys. I'll see you for our next episode. Until then, remember, I love you and be excellent to each other.